That's when the stuff hits the fan. Self-defense tool, it's a homemade self-defense walking stick. It's really just a dowel rod that I picked up from the local hardware store. This was an inch and a quarter. The other one that I like to train with is an inch thick. This one is made out of oak. It's nice and heavy. The other one's made out of hickory. doesn't matter what yours is made out of. You can make your own. They're 36 inches, and it immediately gives you the option of putting a stick between you and the threat. Maybe you've got a knife. Maybe it's a bigger attacker. Maybe it's multiple opponents, multiple attackers. When stuff hits the fan and you have your homemade self-defense walking stick, you can employ it immediately and stopping the advance of the attack. You might have other self-defense options, but if you are in the idea of preparing yourself, being a prepper for self-defense, this is one of the best things that you can carry in addition to anything else you might like to carry. It's a non-lethal self-defense tool that can be lethal. From here, you simply put it in the direction of the opponent, you strike right through the middle with a firm grip and stepping at the same time, you'll generate a massive amount of force and you're gonna go right through their center line. I'm gonna show you several ways to strike. One is by turning and bringing it in full speed, full power. It's very hard to see it. It's very hard to stop it from their perspective and you're able to do it with a little bit of force, a little bit of energy from yourself. So you're able to do a lot of things with the perfect stuff hits the fan, homemade self-defense prepper tool, which is the self-defense walking stick. Let me talk just a little bit about how to make your own. Hello, Matthew. Hello, everybody. Just get yourself 36 inch dowel rod. It can be any hardwood is best, but you can go with poplar. You can go with, you know, even if you find something that's not as sturdy, as long as you rip the finish off of it. So let's say you get a, um, a tool handle. A lot of people like to get a tool handle from the store, but when they take the tool handle and they make it, they usually, especially if it's not expensive, they're gonna kiln dry the wood, which means suck all of the moisture out of it, making it brittle. So, and then they put a finish on it. You wanna sand the finish off, or if you get one of these, and I put the links below if you wanna have one sit to you in the mail, it's, uh, you simply start to oil it up. You get any kind of mineral oil. You put the oil on it every couple days as you first start to use it. And then the wood will start to absorb that oil, becoming more flexible and strong. And then, of course, you sand off all of the things that might, you know, the little splinters that might go in your hand. And then you've got it. You've got the perfect homemade stuff hits the fan, self-defense prepper tool, the homemade self-defense walking stick for less than 10 bucks. So let's talk about those basic strikes. If it's in your front hand, you can simply point your thumb at the threat. Now, if I'm walking like a walking stick, my hand is usually gonna be on the top at this length. This is only 36 inches. It comes up to about my waist. So if you're walking with it as a simple walking stick, it's just a disguised self-defense prepper tool, or maybe you use a walking stick because it helps you get around better. You slide your hand down the back of that stick and then point the thumb at the threat. From here, you can slide through very forcefully with a tight grip on the back hand, and you aim with that front hand right into the center of the attacker. And you're going to think about what you can remove or destroy. I want you to target, to acquire a target, something that you can remove or destroy with this hard piece of wood. That means nose, teeth, eyes, throat, uh, solar plexus, into the groin, and wherever you point the front hand, that's where the rest of your stick's gonna go. That's the first kind of strike. Your hand slides down the back, you point the thumb, and then you step. The second kind of strike, your hand will slide down the back in the same way, and then you just pick it up and thrust using the small part going right into the person's face, nose, eyes, anything for self-defense that's going to interrupt their ability to see you breathe temporarily or permanently, you can stick that right into that throat, collapse that under just a few pounds of pressure, and you're gonna generate a lot of force no matter how strong you are. Your hand is here, it slides down the back. So it looks like this, I simply bring it down here. The first one was pushing, you can also extend the arms as you push, the second one is lifting and coming straight up. The third way, holding in this position, your hand slides down, and you're going to turn your thumb to the ground as you punch your arm straight out. So your arm comes out and your thumb turns down. What that looks like is that. It's a simple motion. Very simple, very fast. 
is when you turn your hips and your shoulders together while you're doing that punch and drop your thumb, this is gonna whip up next to the side or along the side of his skull, his eyes. Maybe you knock him out. If you can knock him out, that's the best scenario. You don't know if he's got a knife or another weapon. If you knock him out, you don't have to worry about stopping the knife or taking away the knife or blocking the knife. I don't want you to block when you can strike. So from here, you're gonna slide down, turn that shoulder, turn the hip, bring it up and over very fast. It's hard for them to see it. It's hard for them to block it. It's hard for them to stop it. And that's your advantage in self-defense. The other advantage of using the perfect Stuff Hits the Fan SHTF Prepper Self-Defense Tool, the homemade self-defense walking stick, is that it is longer than any most bladed weapons, unless they've got a samurai sword or something, or some ridiculous uh, medieval long uh, bladed sword, right? But most of the time, if it's a knife, even if it's a machete or a hatchet, they might have something this long. Most likely they're gonna have something this long or shorter. You have this long piece of wood. Now I showed you how to hit this way. I showed you how to extend your reach. And I showed you how to extend your reach this way. But you can also, after you strike here, pull it back to your shoulder and strike full speed, full power, full force. That's a knockout blow. That's a strike that's going to destroy arms, wrists, elbow, upper arm, crack the skull for self-defense, probably knock them out, hopefully. Hit them in the neck, you can hit that, um, the nerves in the neck that flush the blood out of the brain, then they fall unconscious through the floor immediately. That's good for you for self-defense. Maybe from here, their hand is coming in with that, that blade and you strike that hand. Remember, I don't want you to block when you can strike. If you can strike first, strike first. So from here, I bring it up, create distance, pull to the same shoulder. Notice that my hands are apart. When you bring your hands together, you create a pivot point, which like a baseball, right? Baseball bat, which means that you'll lose the ability to stop your strike. And I want you to be able to strike and keep it in front of you. So if this is the threat, I hit him once, I still want this here so that I can stop him in case I didn't knock him out or I missed him or he backed up or he blocked and then he comes back in, I can still stick this in his center line I can strike here and it's still between me and him, right? And then I can stick it right in his face. If you put your hands together, it's hard to stop all that momentum because you've created this pivot point. Use it more like a Japanese sword with your hands apart, about one fist. Next time you watch a movie and there's a Japanese sword play and it's not an you know, authentic Japanese movie, watch how they hold their hands and you'll, you'll know. Oh, they don't know what they're doing because when they're using that sword, their hands are like this. Always keep your hands apart. That allows you to strike and stop between you and them. While it also allows you to make a full follow through for self-defense. Now, let's say it's in the back hand. I'm gonna slide down the front and pick it up this way. Now, the long side is coming out of my thumb where when I was sliding down the back, the long side comes out of my pinky. That was that turning motion. When I slide down the front, I'm gonna lift it into the other hand by again, pointing the thumb right at the threat. So from here, I slide down here. Hey Steve, it's good to see you. I point it. As soon as I point my thumb at the threat, I now have this long 36 inches piece of wood, hard and inexpensive, less than 10 bucks. Go to the Lowe's Hardware, go to the Home Depot, go to the Ace Hardware, or whatever lumber yard. Maybe you've got an 84 lumber. I used to love that as a kid. That's all we had out in farmland. The 84 lumber, we didn't even have farm and fleet back then, but you could go and get yourself a little piece of wood and sand it down, get all the burrs off of it, and then soak it in a, in a, with a rag every day. Just put mineral oil on that thing, some Minwax, something like that. Do that over and over, and then what happens is, I'm not going to be able to bend it, this is an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter of oak. But what happens is it's becoming young again. It's becoming vital again. It's getting oil in there so it doesn't break. When it comes from the factory, the lumber yard, or the, the actual manufacturer, they kiln dry it. They suck all the air or the water out of it. You've got to get some moisture back in there. So from here in the backhand, slide down the front, pick it up and thrust. 
do three things to create massive stopping power to stop them from hurting you. And if you like working with self-defense tools, if you're a prepper for SHTF or you're just a self-defense person like I am, give me the thumbs up. You like weapons, give me the thumbs up. Share this with somebody else. You know what I found out recently? Uh, you know, because I get thumbs down every once in a while, which is great. I love when people don't like it and then give me feedback and say, here's what I thought. Because I learned from that. <laughs> I'm not always right. I'm not. I'm not always right. But I'm never in doubt. <laughs> and then when I find out a different way to do something, I like to take notes. I like to try it out. And I like to figure it out. But this is what I found out recently about the YouTube. They took away the public dislikes. Surprise, surprise, right? We have a new administration. Now we can't let everybody know what they really think. Anyway, I, I think it's kind of silly. I'd rather see the, the down votes and the up votes. Now your hands here, you put it here, you bring it up, you have this thrusting motion, get more power, stopping power, knockout power to stop them from hurting you. This is this perfect stuff hits the fan self-defense tool. Let's say you're living off the grid, the grid goes down. And you say, well, that's so far-fetched. That's not gonna happen. What are you doing all this alarmist stuff for? But do you remember two years ago when we said they're never gonna shut us down for this, this uh, stuff coming out of that other country over there where they had maybe a laboratory? They'll never shut us down. They'll never shut our businesses. Hey, Ed, it's good to see you. They'll never make people wear a mask. They're not gonna force you to get a vaccine. I shouldn't have said that word out loud. You know, right, because it's the, it's the land, it's, it's censorship, it's big brother. We're living in the uh, dystopia. Anyway, you don't have to agree, but be prepared or panic. Be prepared or perish. This is just a simple self-defense tool anybody can carry. It's in your back hand. You slide down the front. You point the thumb and you thrust. You step forward, bringing your foot forward, bringing your arm forward, extend the arm, move the body, and turn the shoulders and hips. Those are the three things. The three secrets of all martial arts for knockout power. This is boxing, uh, any kind of striking martial arts. You need three things if you wanna knock somebody out. It's always the same, it doesn't matter what the style is. Extension, rotation, and body movement. Extend the arm as far as you can. Extend your self-defense, prepper self-defense, perfect SHTF, uh, self-defense walking stick. That's the word I'm looking for. Self-defense walking stick. Extend your arms all the way and turn your shoulders into it. It's a small turn, shoulders and hips, shoulders and hips. Step that front foot at the same time. Do you see what happened when I stepped the foot? This is just the arm, this is the shoulders, that is the foot. There's almost no effort when I move my foot forward and it boom, goes right through. The center line, aim for their spine. Stick the stick, this is the stick. We're stick fighting now for self-fence, stick it, through their spine into next week, right? Literally, go through them as far as you can to stop the fight. Then, from here, you already know that chop strike, but let me show you another one. Slide here, it's one of the beautiful things about a stick. Learning how to fight with a stick for self-defense is brilliant because there's so many sticks around us, right? And it doesn't matter the length, you can learn how to fight with one length and then apply it to several other links. The longest, the bow staff, or a quarter staff in, in uh, European martial arts, Hima, historical European martial arts, or the bow, the Japanese bow, or the jangbong in Korean, or the Chinese gun, or uh, bang, or kudjol. Any long staff or spear has unique movements that the rest of them don't have, but most of them, there are a lot that are the same. Anytime you put your hands in the center, you can stick that piece of wood, stick the stick through his face for self-defense. You can, from this position, no matter how long the stick is, box from side to side. No matter how long your stick is, thrust like a bayonet attack, like you're in the military. Or, hey, David, it's good to see you. Or bring it from the side and bring the back side in. That's gonna be pretty common, pretty unique, or uh, pretty general. You're gonna do that, and it's just gonna sh share that between almost all the different types of sticks, different lengths of sticks. Then, when we get into spins, and turns, and rotations, and different, that's unique, but that's more of the fancy stuff you don't use for self-defense. That's for fun. That's for uh, artistry. That's for timing and distance. 
spatial awareness. That's for learning how to move through space and time. That's learning how to fight with different kinds of sticks. Like if you were in a movie, but if you're not in a movie, if you're, <laughs> this is what I was gonna say about the grid going down. Imagine this, Russia invades Ukraine. Could that possibly happen? I don't know. <laughs> Are you paying attention? Or let's say uh, Big Daddy China says we wanna take Taiwan back, free China. I call Taiwan free China because it's a country that's free. And China is a country that's not, it's run by the communists. So let's say the communists wanna invade both of those, uh, Russia and China, they have hackers, right? And we know they can at attack our grid. Let's say the grid goes down and people are already a little desperate, people are a little hungry. Hey, Matthew, it's good to see you again. You have the perfect undercover, stuff hits the fan, and maybe it's just a week or two. You gotta protect yourself for a week. I, I saw a story this morning <laughs> And you kids, kids, I keep hearing people keep saying, well, you know, you're exaggerating. And it's like, well, I don't think I am. You keep seeing more attacks, more attacks of the retail thefts. They say, well, that's organized crime. Yeah, but it's happening everywhere. You see them interview certain people in certain cities and they're like, well, I can't go to the store anymore because I don't know when I'm going to be there. And they're going to come in and just start taking stuff off the shelf and then they might hurt me. Or uh, last night, there was a couple coming out of a, uh, a nice hotel and they got robbed right on the street. Car pulls up, people hop out, boom, give me your stuff. They took like $100,000 worth of jewelry. Now, I would say who's got $100,000 worth of jewelry, but I've seen it. I know, I know people who carry that. So yeah, that's a real thing. I'm not saying it's going to happen to you, but I'd rather be prepared than panic. And I'm not saying you're walking around with your $10 dowel rod and $100,000 worth of jewelry, and a guy's got a gun and you're going to fight him because that's stupid. You wouldn't do that. You'd give him your jewelry. That's less valuable than your life. But what happens if the grid goes down and you have to protect your family, your, your loved ones, your food source, your life for just a few weeks until things get, you know, smoothed out again, just in case. Hopefully it never happens, but what if it does? Can you use a stick for self-defense? Yes. Can you use a walking stick for self-defense? Absolutely. Here's how. You slide your hand down the front, pick it up, thrust through his body, smash the brain for self-defense, slide the hand to the front, and then bring this one here. Now, I wanted to show you one more thing. Um, yeah, Steve says uh, sword cane. But here's, here's where I'm going to say, Steve, I agree with you. And this is what I think about using a piece of wood that doesn't have a sword in the middle of it. Because Steve's talking about a sword cane where it looks like a fancy cane. You pull it out and there's a sword. Then you stab somebody. And then things settle down. A few weeks later, the cops are at your door. <laughs> You're getting indicted for murder with intent because you're carrying around a sword cane. But in this case, you're just walking around because your hip hurts, your knee hurts. And you picked up this uh, piece, piece of dowel rod because you didn't have time to get to the medical store and get yourself a cane or you don't want to wear a wire, use a cane. And then you need to defend yourself. All of a sudden, using your dowel rod, you have some options that are not necessarily running them through with a sword. Maybe you don't want to run, I don't want to run anybody through with a sword, that's a little gruesome. If I don't have to, um, I'd use my hands, I'd defend myself with my hands. I know what to do with my hands. I know a lot of you do too. <laughs> Steve's getting worse, he said he's got a shovel too. Yeah, I know the shovel, that, maybe, you know, they, yeah, that's better than the sword cane, you're right. Anyway, I'm, like I said, I'm not disagreeing with you. I want, to do, I want to talk about one thing before we finish, because I do have a class coming in. You can see, that I'm prepping, fixing all the holes in the wall <laughs> that we put there from uh, uh, good use. We got good use out of the space. It's time for us to move. Found a space. We're in negotiation now. Uh, I like to get really aggressive in the negotiations. Hopefully the other side isn't afraid of negotiating and we can find some compromise. So we countered. We'll see. Hopefully soon. So pray for us. Keep your fingers crossed that we moved the school to a new location. Yes, Matthew, I've got to be out of here before Christmas. The landlord said, get out. I don't want you here anymore. <laughs> and I was saying, I don't want to be here anymore either. It's, getting, it's, it's just not the right spot for us. So we knew, it wasn't, it's, it's a mutual thing. It's, it's positive on both sides. We're both saying, yeah, let's, let's find a new place. Thank you, David. So we're hopefully have a new space. And um, I don't know what that has to do with anything. I think I was just telling you that because that... <laughs> 
you look at the walls and you're like, that, that place looks like a, a crap hole. Well, yeah, it does now, but wait till I paint it. There's only one thing I'm better at than martial arts. And well, hopefully there's more than one. Painting, I grew up painting since I was a wee little kid. I've been painting. So yeah, well, I'm, glad, I'm glad you made it. Marco said he's always missing the live showings. I'm glad you're here. Hello, it's good to see you. Um, I just haven't had as much time because I'm literally driving all over trying to find a new location, looking at spaces, talking about spaces, trying to get some stuff done. So we're, but we're getting close, we're really close. So I wanted to ask you, pray for me, make sure it's, you know, pray it's the right space, the right thing for us. And uh, thanks, Steve. Steve says he loves the walking stick arts. Me too. It's, one of, it's my, one of my favorite things to do. Any length stick. And I've been playing around. I've got these uh, short sticks that I'm teaching people with. They're 12 inches and 10 to 12 inches. And then we roll, we practice those for like about 20 minutes, smashing things, hitting people, hitting each other, applying some pressure points, applying some pain for self-defense. And then we roll up some magazines that we find, like the local surfer magazines. This is surf town, right? It's got surfer magazines everywhere. They're nice and glossy and shiny, pretty pictures. But when you roll it up real tight, you got a fighting stick. And so we've been doing a lot of that stuff. But what I was gonna say is, moving off the line, I want you to learn how to do some turning motions. We haven't done a lot of this, but we've done a little bit. And so from here, if I put, put the tip here, let's say this is his body, and I turn my back hand up and my front hand goes down a little bit. So the back hand goes up, front hand goes down a little bit. Notice that my elbow is not lifting, just the hands. Think about hands. Lift it here, push your back hand away from your body, which pushes the tip away. I'm gonna show you from a different angle in a minute, and then bring it back in. So imagine this is the side of his face. I'm gonna turn and smash. From here, it becomes a very fast smashing motion. One, two, one, push it out, two. So I want you to practice. Now this front hand, that becomes kind of a pivot point. It's not gonna move much. So I need to make him taller because I missed him last time. So when I look at you and I'm looking at, I should be looking at him, right? And I wanna bring it here and fast. And just work on your speed. From here, making it quicker and quicker. Now, this is just my hands doing it. And I told you before, the way to get knockout power, generate massive stopping power, you've got to do extension, rotate, the rotation of the shoulders and hips, and move the body. So the second thing I'm gonna do, when I bring this here, is I'm gonna push my arm forward so I can get that extension. Now, if this is his head, his brain, his operating system for that hand that's got the knife, I don't want him to touch me with the knife, I bring it here, when I bring it forward, see how I extend there? I get more power, more reach when I push the arm. Then I want to add shoulders and hips. Um, David says, great advice. Thanks you, David. This is just, this is the fundamentals, fundamentals of self, practical self-defense. What is practical self-defense? Principles, principles over technique. First principle, situational awareness, pay attention to what's happening around you. Number two, get in a better position. Put the stick between you and the threat. If you can uh, interrupt their line of sight, do that. They gotta look around your stick just to see it. That's perfect for you. Number three, ask yourself, breathe. Ask yourself, what targets can you remove or destroy? What targets uh, can you remove or destroy? The greatest says, love watching you. Thanks, greatest, love having you here. I didn't come up with that. That comes from, quick, put it in the comments, the book, When Violence is the Answer, Larkin. I don't know why these names pop out of my head when I need to <laughs> talk about it. Tim Larkin, thank you. Tim Larkin. All right, just go read that book. Order it from Amazon or read parts of it, or just go and follow him here on YouTube. Tim Larkin, When Violence is the Answer, you'll learn so much and it'll change your whole perspective, like it did mine when I first came across it, probably 10 years ago. From here, extend, extend. But see how I'm still keeping the stick between me and the threat? Always keep, keep the stick between you and the threat. You have to um, keep this, Team Kuhn says, I get so much from the video, thank you, thank you Team Kuhn for being here. From here, I always keep the stick between me and the threat. I want him to have to get around this stick to try to get me. Then, number two, generate more uh, knocking, knockout power, stopping power, 
Stop the fight. Make them stop trying to hurt you. Defang the snake. Snake. Defang the snake, Steve says. I love that. All right. From here, you've got this extension of the arm. Now, turn. And you only have to do a little bit of shoulders and hips. Your core muscles are bigger. Your core muscles are bigger than his arm, no matter how big he is and strong. I keep seeing this meme. I love this meme. And the meme has pictures of two bodybuilders, and they're just jacked. Their shirts are off, and they look like, and they're giving a grimace or whatever. And the meme says that people who are untrained, who have no training in self-defense or martial arts, fear people who look like that. It, it, was, it was a shorter thing. It was like, who the un, untrained fear? which is true. A lot of times when people don't have experience, they just figure big guys, big guys. The bigger the guy, the more afraid they are because they see him and they think, oh, that guy's gonna rip me apart. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Um, I just lost my train of thought. I, I, I filled up my gas tank today. It was 90 bucks. And I thought that same thing you just wrote. I'm not gonna say it, but yeah, I thought the exact same thing. Uh, $90, come on. What, 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 what's the next pipeline you're shutting down? How much higher can you center gasoline? Are you serious? All right, from here, I saw a new one. There was, there's another one that, that uh, they're trying to stop production and increase the price. It's on purpose, too. They want us to drive electric cars or something or great reset. Who knows? Anyway, but I, I have to turn my shoulders and hips. No matter how big and strong the guy is, he is not, his arm is not stronger than your core, your, your front and your back and your legs. Your body will always be bigger than my arm. I don't care. I can lift weights for the rest of my life and take steroids in one arm, right? And get that massive arm. It doesn't matter. It can never be stronger than your whole body. And that's the whole point of self-defense, good self-defense, of good self-defense that teaches you how to use what you have to defeat a bigger, stronger opponent. That's what this is. It's not about this, it's about what's in here, what you know and what you've experienced and what you've learned and what you've practiced, what you practiced, prepare or perish. So from here, if you understand that by turning your shoulders and hips and extending the arm, you can generate more force than he can in one arm, the second part of that meme, the first part of the meme said, who the untrained fear, it was two big bodybuilders. The second part was two like boxers, right? Two small, probably featherweights, or welterweights at best, and I forget who they were, but they were two prof or famous professional boxers, and it says who the trained fear, meaning who people who understand what fighting really is, they fear these two smaller guys who can move and really generate knockout power and hit you anywhere they want as often as they want over and over if you don't know what you're doing. So you might be afraid of the big bodybuilder dude, but he's all fluff and talk. He doesn't know what he's doing. He moves slow. He's got too much muscle. You get the boxing kid who comes in who's been boxing at the boxing gym and he's hungry and he's been living on the street half the time because he's got no money. He's got nothing but hunger and he knows how to fight. You're in trouble if you don't know how to defend yourself. You shouldn't be fighting anyway, right? Um, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. But to defend yourself, don't be afraid of someone with size. Don't be afraid even if they just have the weapon. Be aware and take precaution. Prepare so you don't have to panic. If you have a stick, that's better than trying to block it with your hand. So generate that power, extend the arm, turn the shoulders and hips. And like I keep saying, when you move your body forward, and I want you to see this because it is so extremely simple, you're going to say, that is extremely simple. And ignore all the junk on the floor. I'm just taking stuff off the wall, right? That's it. So I'm here. Here go the hands. I'm going to turn the shoulders and hips. I'm going to extend that arm. And I step. And when I move my body forward, I've now multiplied the force of my strike exponentially. Exponentially. I have to turn and move forward. Push this forward. Turn my shoulders and hips. Take that step to close the distance, but also dramatically increase the strike. Yeah, um, George says, swing first. Like I said, if you have a choice between blocking a knife or hitting them in the head before they get the knife anywhere close to you because you got in the better position and that knife comes out, stick it right, right through his face, right? It doesn't even have to be a strong attack because you're using this wood. 
Yeah, immediate, direct, and explosive. David says straightforward and dynamic. I say close with and destroy, right? Violence of action, immediate, direct, and explosive. Write all those down. Close with and destroy. That means moving forward, closing the distance, right? The worst thing you can do, this is a true story. It breaks my heart. It's disgusting. It happened down here to a young boy. He's riding his bike, crazy homeless guy from... Um, not all homeless are crazy, by the way. This is a guy who, you know, he, he probably should have been, he needed to be institutionalized, not probably, for sure, a long time ago, and everybody just keeps kicking him down the road. And his path crossed with a young man riding his bike at night, innocent, beautiful child, um, and, and he, he starts hacking him with a knife. He killed him. And uh, insiders who we talked to, who know a little bit more of the, the report, what happened that night after the, you know, an FBI got involved to find this guy. And then the guy had a YouTube channel and he's, he's, he's obviously paranoid. He's just nuts. But the kid, they said he would have survived his injuries. He had a lot of lacerations on his face, but he would have survived if he hadn't done this. And when he did this, it allowed him to slice him so deeply that he bled to death. And so the one thing that I want you to always remember is that when the blade comes out, whether it's a slashing attack or a jabbing attack, usually it's a slashing attack, and it's, they're coming, and it's almost always coming from this angle. The worst thing that you can do is recoil. It's instinctive, though. So if you don't train it out of yourself, you're going to do this, and they're just going to hack you up. Instead, if, if you see the knife and you're like 15 feet away, 20, 30 feet away, run if you can, right? If you're right here and you're in a better position, hey, buddy, back up, you're too close, and that knife comes out, then if you have the stick, shove it through his face. Shove it through his face, smash him in the brain 5, 10, 15 times as fast as you can for self-defense, for self-defense. Try to knock him out. Take away his ability to be awake, right, so that he can't get you and slash you. But move in, close with, and destroy. Violence of action in that direct line, right, straight through the middle. This piece of wood against nose, teeth, eyes, throat is extremely effective. That's why I love the perfect SHTF prepper or SHTF self-defense tool. Stuff hits the fan, right? We're talking about what happens if all of a sudden you need to defend yourself against one or more people. But this is the homemade walking stick self-defense tool. It's just a simple piece of wood. Let's say you don't have this, and this is where I want to talk about elbows because I think elbows are sticks. If you think about this to here, that's a stick, right? From here to here, we're talking about this stick, your upper arm, which is the thicker of the sticks. You've got two bones here, you've got that one bone here, but this one is nice and big and round. So close quarters. We're going straight in. We're not going to try to sidestep. We're not going to try to do anything fancy. I don't want you to try to disarm the knife. I don't want you to grab for the knife. Don't do anything, but put your helmet on. Your helmet has to go on first. When you put your helmet on, your hands are here. Now, the backs of your hands will still get cut, likely. And it's far better, like by a thousand times, than getting cut on this side. Think about how much muscle, how many tendons, nerves are flowing through there, all the veins and arteries, your blood flow. When you're here, you're very much in danger of even if you, if you don't die, having massive reconstructive surgery, even possibly losing the use or the feeling of your hands, your lower arm. But when you put your shield on or your, your helmet on, put your helmet on, this brings up in here, protecting your face and exposing the backside of your arm and not this. Remember I said you will instinctively do this when that blade comes out. You're going to do this naturally. Do this to overcome what's natural. Martial arts, self-defense is about training away the counterintuitive things, training in a way that's counterintuitive to what you think you should do. Most people go like this, just make it stop. It's fear, it's, it's, and it's good, healthy fear. If that blade comes out, you should be terrified. But put your shield on, or your helmet, put your helmet on, and then drive that elbow. Use this stick. This is about a stick fighting video. Use that stick to drive straight into his face the same way that I told you to take this stick and drive it straight through his face. You can go face, go uh, throat, 
You can even go solar plexus if he's a lot taller than you. you. If it comes in here, that's good too. If it comes in here, that's his throat. If it comes in here, that's his face. But he, it's going to stop his forward advance. From here, I want to hit first and then immediately collapse my front hand around my back hand, going fingers over that pinky meat, right? All this meat here, that big chunky part of your hand. Close them, and then you're gonna use this to strike over and over, two, three times, into soft tissue, into nose, eyes, smash stuff into his face it's hard for self-defense. Then his knife comes out, it's too late to do anything. You can't run, you, you can't pull if you have something else. It's too late to do that. You have to immediately respond, put your, your helmet on, stick your helmet on, and leap your whole body, however much you weigh. I weigh 244 pounds this morning. I usually say throw away the scale, especially this time of the year because you're eating so much salt and sugar, and you're holding water from the salt, and then you're urinating from the sugar. And because of the show, you know, all of the, the, the Thanksgiving feasts or the the, um, you know, all the other different holidays, Christmas is coming up, there's cookies everywhere, and you're gonna get mad at yourself, but <laughs> I, have, I have goals, right? So I'm, I'm looking at my weight every day when I get up. It's, for me, it's fun, because yeah, it, it doesn't affect me emotionally, like it does some people. If weighing yourself affects you emotionally, throw it away. All right, put your shield on. However much you weigh, that was the point. I weighed 244 pounds this morning. I wanna stick that through his face for self-defense. From here, put your helmet on. Your hands should be here anyway. As soon as you feel threatened, hey, buddy, you're too close. Your hands come up and they go between you and the threat. Situational awareness. Get in a better position. And then immediate direct explosive. The straight line is the shortest distance between those two points. Between your elbow and his nose. And just smash it. From here, come here. And then smash two or three times until you see them moving back. As he's moving back, then drive those elbows into his face or into his ribs, driving as hard as you can, trying to knock him out for self-defense. He's got a weapon. You're not going to stand there and negotiate and, and talk about things and blah, 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 and ask, you know, well, maybe he, had, maybe he wasn't having a good day. Maybe, you know, I wonder what it was like in his childhood. No, you're going to stick your elbows through his face, helmet on, smash two or three times, elbows to the face, and then drop this down and stick it in his body. And if you step at the same time, it should knock him back. And then run and get out of there. Hopefully he's already on the ground and he's unconscious or he can't see because you bashed his face, blood's coming out, he can't catch his breath. You took away his ability to breathe temporarily or permanently because that elbow went into his throat. And then the cops come and pick him up. And then the, the story, instead of this headline about this poor boy and how horrific, how horrific this tragedy is for his family now, the story could be crazed, demented, paranoid, homeless guy who's been arrested over 30 times, violent assault all over, and they let him out the same day, asphyxiates and dies. We're all sad, you know, because that's somebody's kid. And we say, you know, say a prayer or whatever. But you think, at least he's not going to hurt anybody else. May, we failed him as a society. Next time, hopefully we sit. But that young kid, you get to go home and be with your family. You, the innocent person. You didn't bring the violence to him. He brought the violence to you. But as soon as the violence comes to you, you bring it right back. You throw that helmet on. You step in with the body. You smash the face multiple times. Not one. Not one and done, right? Fight's not over till you win. And then elbows to the face. And then drive into that throat or into the solar plexus. Throw a knee if you have to. Grab the back of his head, smash it down for self-defense into his knee. And then worry about what people think about it later or whatever. Uh, oh, good. The greatest. I'm glad you're here from Britain. I keep waiting for them to call in. Uh, uh, what's his name? I keep saying this. The Transformer, the Autobot, the big guy, right? The big truck, he's my favorite. Uh, I can never think of his name though. Optimus Prime to fight the Omicron. But I don't think you're gonna do it. Hopefully they don't shut you guys down too hard over there in Great Britain. Yeah, let's get Optimus Prime to come in. And he, he's as realistic and he's as real as all this other silliness. That's all I'll say about that. And then I'll say, you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. I'll see you in a little bit.